Hello, House of Transformation Nation. We welcome you to our Sunday morning service. Here at House of Transformation Nairobi, we have entered a season of thanksgiving and celebration. It's going to be a buzz of activity today and for the rest part of the week. We're going to be telling you more about it shortly. We would like to thank our in-person congregation for having joined us for the service today. And to our online family, Asanteni Sana for having tuned in. Please do the usual, like, subscribe, and share this video link with your family and friends. Let them enjoy this service together with you. Now, here at House of Transformation Nairobi, we're going to be having our 34th Thanksgiving celebrations coming up this weekend. The celebrations on Saturday are going to start at 2.30 p.m. And on Sunday, we'll have a Thanksgiving service that starts at 9 a.m. Please support it with your prayers, finances, and maximum participation. To support the forthcoming Thanksgiving celebration financially, you may send your contributions to the Kingdom Builders account via M-Pesa or bank transfer. We are looking forward to have a wonderful time this weekend. Now, should you be watching and may be in need of prayer, counseling, or any information that pertains to House of Transformation Nairobi, please reach us today on 0111-185-185. Our call center team is ready to serve you. Church, the service is now about to begin, so let's ready our hearts. Worship team, as usual, take it away.
ground on a firm foundation. You picked us up by the blood from the Mary Clay Lord as the scriptures say. You are our lifter, Lord. We thank you and we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He has lifted us. We bless your name.
says, we are not alone. We are walking with the King of Kings. He who is able to strengthen us. He who is able to help us. Call out to him. Shout out to him. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. We lift your name. Thank you for your anointing, for your spirit that forever guides us. It forever helps us, Lord. It shows us the direction that we should go. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. He is our strength. We fix our eyes on him. And on anything we're going through, we fix our eyes on the creator, on Jesus, our Savior. He was there right from the beginning, and he is still there with us. We're in him. He is in the Father. And with that, we are complete. We are in union. Father, Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. May your anointing flow over our lives. Spirit, put 
Let's just worship the Lord one more time with a clap offering, with a praise. He is present in the house. Thank you, Jesus. You're such an awesome and a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Saints of God, why don't you just walk to one or two people and welcome them into God's house and tell them, I'm so glad that you came. I'm so glad that you came to worship him. I'm so glad that you came to give thanks to him. He is a good God. He is an awesome God. He is a wonderful God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Such an awesome God he is. Amen. 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 Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And once you've given that warm handshake, you're welcome to take your seat in God's presence. And also as we take our seats, why don't we appreciate Rosalind and the worship team that have led us in such a wonderful time of coming before God. The band that we have here, the instrumentalists, may God richly, richly bless you. It is a wonderful, wonderful day that we are in God's house, the 9th of July, 2023. If the devil had his way, you would not have been here. But God, turn to your neighbor and tell them, but God, but God. I want to talk about a but God that many of us may not be aware of because the enemy may have wanted us, you know, to be annihilated uh, where we are right now, but God sustained us. Hallelujah. God is such a wonderful God. I am reminded of a scripture in Matthew chapter 10 verse 29 where it reminds us that you are of more value to God than a sparrow. I want to remind you that the reason why you're here today, it is purely because God wanted you to be here. The enemy may have wanted you not to be here, but God designed it that you're here. A disease may have come your way, but God has sustained you. A vehicle accident may have happened somewhere in the neighborhood, but God made sure that you're here. The scripture says, give me that scripture in Matthew uh, 10, 29. It says, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. Ah, hallelujah. I want to remind you that the very hairs Pastor Joe, where are you? Are you in the house? The scripture says, but the very hairs of your head are numbered. Not counted. They are numbered. Hey, it's powerful to know that God has numbered each one of... You know what it means for them to be numbered and not counted? It means that if one hair, sister, so-and-so, as you are combing um, your hair this morning, not balas. I don't know whether the ones that come from Balas are counted or numbered, but your hairs, 
For those of us who are international, Mbalas is that hair. Have you ever, have you, I remember one time when I was working in the studio, I walked into the studio and I found the co-host that I had. She's a lady and I was in shock because her hair was on the table. That's, <laughs> that's what we call Mbalas. So anyway, the very hairs of your head are numbered. In other words, when you're combing your hair and one hair is stuck on that comb, God knows it is hair number 1,225. Not only does he know the numbers, but he knows the very number. That's the detail to which God knows you. Hallelujah. Your very DNA is designed by God. In other words, what I'm telling, trying to tell you, saint of God, where you are today in this year of enlargement, God knows what you require to be delivered. And he will deliver. Hallelujah. God will enlarge you, but not just enlarge you, but he will deliver you. I am not the preacher of the day, but I'm so glad to be in God's house today. When it is written that I was glad, I am one of those that attest to the fact that I am glad that I am in God's house today. How many of us are glad to be in God's house this morning? Thank you so much. For those of you who are watching us online, we also welcome you, but we would so love that you can join us here physically where we can enjoy the right hand of fellowship together. Amen? Do we have anybody who's here for the first time? Kindly just raise up your hand. We'd like to appreciate you. We'll not ask you to say anything. Ah, wonderful. I see some hands here. I see some other beautiful hands there. I see other hands where? Where? May I humbly just request that you stand up wherever you are so that we may be able to just thank you for coming. Please just stand up wherever you are. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. I see a good number. If you're next to one of those who are here for the first time, would you stand up and just welcome them? Give them a warm handshake and let them know that we're so glad that you visited us with us today. It is a wonderful, wonderful day. I believe that God is not in the business of wasting time. And as a result, you will be blessed. You will not leave here the same way you came. You will leave here blessed, blessed, blessed. Amen. Anybody who maybe has been away and possibly is back uh, from a journey, from a trip, from a mission, if you're here, would also just like to acknowledge that you're here. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Are you there? Oh, I see a hand right there. Thank you so much, sir. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have, uh, I see, I see that we're warming up for the Thanksgiving. I see Pastor Masengeli is around. Uh, welcome, sir. We have pastors, we have uh, Lavan who is around, we have Pastor Joe, I see Pastor Tom, I see Pastor George, I see Pastor Mike, I see, oh, I'm seeing many pastors in this place, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord, amen, amen. I see Mudoi right there, uh, I hope I don't forget anybody, hallelujah, but also we have our visitors from far and wide. So I don't know whether I start with the nearer father or father nearer. But I see Sister Catherine right there. Come on, let's appreciate her. I see our dear brother Itai is around. Good to see you, Itai. Wow, wow. We also have Sa Sanamandra family who are here. Most welcome. Good to see you. Yes, you may stand up. We just appreciate you. Thank you so much. So we have Captain Divakar, Sanita, and Nohia, uh, who's their daughter. Thank you. We're so glad to have you. We're so, so glad to have you. And thank you for joining us. I also see Pastor Andrea. Come on, let's appreciate him and his lovely wife. Please, let's just stand up and appreciate. I will just stand up so that they can see you. Kindly just stand up and may God richly bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also see Pastor Wedderburn. And his wife, come on, let's appreciate them and give them a warm, 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 warm welcome. So glad to have you, so glad to have you. It is a wonderful day indeed, and I can see that the thanksgiving has already begun. We have a lot to thank God for. We really have a lot to thank God for. 34 years is not a small thing. It is a huge milestone that God has given us with none other than Bishop and Sister Mary Ruti V. Come on. Can we do better than that and just appreciate them? 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Mary, our good, good mother, we love you so much. We love you so much. And you've done such a tremendous, fantastic, wonderful, fantamagogious job to take care of this young man, Bishop Alois A. Rutivi. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It shows you the power of partnership. Hallelujah. The power of partnership. Lavana, are you listening? The power of partnership. Mm, mm, hallelujah. I don't want to take too long because I'm not the preacher of the day and I can see that we have a wonderful service lined up for us. I'd like to now request that we have the announcements before we move on to the next part of the service. Let's have the announcements from the media team. Thank you. House of Transformation Nation, what a day it is to be in the presence of the Lord, where there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Yesterday, the Hot Men's Fellowship visited with the children's home in Kibira, and they had a wonderful time together with those lovely souls. Let's have a look at the highlights. On Saturday, the 8th of July, the Hot Men's Fellowship visited with the children in Jami Yetu Education Center in Kibira. It's a wonderful home that's under the care of the Mwangis. The gentlemen went bearing gifts and the children were delighted. These men of valor then got to encourage the children in the Lord. wanted to give back to the society. Mama alikuwa mkalifu, alipenda kusaidia wana kijiji. Tukaanza kupatia watoto chakula. Watoto wakakuja kumi, ishirini, wakazidi kwa hengi. So hapo ndiyo tukaanza, tukaanza shule. Shule ikaanza. Sasa tumelekea mbaka tuko grade 8. Kwa hiyo miaka tumikuwa hapa. Nataka ni seme Nikiangalia hawa watoto naona wengine ni teachers, walimu, wengine ni nurses, madaktari, engineers, wengine watakuwa maaskofu kama mimi niko. Nana nataka kuwa askofu. Kila mtu nataka kuwa askofu. <laughs> Na Mungu ameona. Ameona. So when I look at these children here Sisi wazazi, tuko na jikumu, tuko na responsibility ya kuonyesha mfano. Later on, prayers were made and they witnessed the hand of God move mightily. Touch the lives of these children. Change them, Father. Let them grow up in wisdom. Let them grow up in knowledge. Let them grow up in stature, having favor with God and having favor with men. Indeed, it was a day well spent for this representation of the Hot Men's Fellowship. Gentlemen, may the Lord richly bless you. We are counting days to the much anticipated 34th Thanksgiving Conference that will take place this weekend. The celebrations on Saturday, the 15th of July, will start at 2.30 p.m. And on Sunday, the 16th of July, we'll have a Thanksgiving service that will start at 9 a.m. We encourage you, church, to pray, support with your finances, and maximum participation. To support the forthcoming Thanksgiving celebration financially, please send your contributions to the Kingdom Builders account via M-Pesa or bank transfer. Our guests for the weekend have started streaming in. So to our local fellowship, should you also feel touched of the Lord to accommodate some of our visitors, please share this information with the office. Who knows, you just might be entertaining angels 
unawares. We are looking forward to a great time of Thanksgiving this weekend. See you there. Church, we have something fresh for you. It's the revamped House of Transformation website. Welcome to the brand new online home of House of Transformation. We are excited to present our newly designed website that's packed with features to enhance your spiritual journey. Our new website is your one-stop hub for all things House of Transformation. From getting directions to different campuses, watching sermons, accessing sermon notes, staying informed about upcoming events, expressing interest in joining a cell group, to giving online, we've got you covered. So what are you waiting for? Come and explore our website today at www.hotministries.org. Welcome to the new online home of House of Transformation. Church, we have some breaking news over some developments that have been brewing over time. Habari za hivi punde ni kwamba mtumishi wa Mungu Chipukizi ndugu ndugu ajulikanaye kirasmi kama Pastor Lavandro TV alionekana jana na kipenzi chake wa roho. Dada dada ajulikanaye kirasmi kama Mercy Daka. Walikuwa na ucheshi si haba walipohudhuria sherehe ya graduation ya dadake mdogo ndugu 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 na dada dada wamesema kinaga ubaga ya kwamba watafanya ndoa hii friday naye babake ndugu ndugu baba baba rutivi alisikika wakati fulani akiongea kuhusu watu ambao angependa wahudhurie sherehe ya kijana wake baba baba alisema haya kuna watu wameshatarishwa na roho mtakatifu ni kile sawa zimekuzwa kwa hivyo nyote mwalikwa kushiriki katika mbwembwe na bashasha ijumaa hii kuanzia saa kumi. Tukimalizia habari za hivi punde ndio huyu Pastor Lavandro TV aka ndugu ndugu akiwaalika kirasmi. Bwana asifiwe wapendwa. Nina hakika kwamba mtabarikiwa siku hii njema ambayo Bwana amefanya. And finally, we have a visiting guest in our midst. What a friend he is to our fellowship. Pastor Reverend Harold Wedderburn, welcome to Kenya. Thanks for the encouragement of this church. I love this church. When 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 we came a young man, I was and the others are gone home. But God spared me to come back again to my home. Dear her heart problem. But, but he slowed me, my heart down, and I said, wait, wait. So I believe in God, and I'll get back home. I just believe God. Amen. And he doesn't bother me at all. So Hallelujah. thank you. Thank you very much for everything. Actually, it is us to thank you for coming. We do not take it for granted. We know the sacrifice in terms of money, yes. in terms of the, the risks yes. that you had to take. And that's what faith is all about. We can't wait to hear what the Lord has to share through you. And that is all we have for you on Hot News today. Enjoy the rest part of the service. Thank you very much, media team. That's a wonderful way of just letting us know that it's all time to get excited. I hope you're all excited. I hope you're all happy. You're looking forward to a wonderful service, but a great week ahead. Amen. But before we get to the other part of the service, it's time for us now to give. And as you've seen, we have quite a number of things that are coming up. So if you've pledged, if God puts it upon your heart to give a little bit more, this would be a good time to do that. We have uh, the... 34th Thanksgiving service and ceremony that's coming up this weekend where we're going to be thanking God for Bishop, uh, uh, Dr. Mary Rutivi and the family and also where God has brought you this far, the milestones that God has given you. So we're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful weekend starting 
Well, it has already started. So we are already excited and we're already happy. So we would like to give, give, give like people who understand what giving is all about. Amen? So as the band gives us a number and the brethren come forward, those of us who are online, you're welcome to see what uh, the numbers that you can do that if you'd like to use mobile money. And may God bless you as you give. Band, let's go.
warm, warm clap. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. May God richly bless you. Now, saints, we've gotten to the part where we'd like to hear the undiluted word of God this morning. Are we ready? Are our hearts ready? Can God prepare our hearts just to receive what God has prepared for us? So why don't we be upstanding as we now put our hands together to welcome uh, Reverend Bishop Dr. Wedderburn <laughs> to come and just minister the word of God as God leads him to do so. Welcome, sir. Reverend Wedderburn, we've missed you. We are so happy that you're here. Come on, keep clapping. We are so happy that you're here. We are so glad that you've joined us this morning. And we're looking forward to what God has in store for us through you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Can we have the lapel mic on, please? Last year we were in Atlanta, and he spoke to me that coming here, and I guess we were kind of dragging our feet a little bit. And then when he said, uh, I have a surprise for you, and being nosy, I, I wanted to know what was the surprise he had. And then he told me that Brother Laverne was going to get married. Amen. I said, I'm going. <laughs> I said, so, Laverne, uh, wherever you are, I saw you. And, okay, we're here because of you. Okay? And you are our dear friend. We wouldn't want this, this, your wedding, and we weren't there. So, that's why we came. And he just, Andre just got to surgery not long ago. His knees, I saw it for him on the plane. And I, <clears throat> I spent 10 days in the hospital, and I didn't know it, but I was having decongested heart attack, and I didn't know it. I went to Bradenton all over the place, and when I got there, swollen, they told me. And I had made my mind up coming here, and I asked the doctor, and he didn't advise me, no. But guess what? I looked the other way. And he looked the other way, and here we are. No permission. And, and Sister Mary and Bishop Retivi told me that um, whose report will you believe? So we believe the report of the, and that's why we're here. And not only that, but we're here because you are our friends. Nairobi is our friends. And I have a long history of Nairobi. When I came here, Micah was younger than you. I was, I was just a young boy, and I carrying the briefcase of Brother Goodwin. But I was, why did they select me of all the hundreds of other men in those days? But I was selected to travel with him. And those days we didn't have cell phone. So I had to find a scripture for him. And if you didn't find it, you were in trouble. And it forced me to learn the scripture. And I traveled by the Goodwin to India. I went to India five times. By the Goodwin and I was stuck there. And uh, we met, but they met by Swain before me. But um, I went there to evangelize. So. And so I've been around. Amen. And the greatest place is Nairobi. Yes. And, and that was the first place that I came. Down at the, where was it, the Hilton? Yeah. I, I'm not used to, and Mike, I'm used to this one, that's why. 
Um, the, the, um, and I'm not used to sit, sitting down either. <laughs> Okay, as long as I have something to hold on to, I'll be fine. But um, let me tell you a little bit about Brother Goodwin. Yes. He was a very strict man. Amen. When he said go, you better go. Don't question Brother Goodwin. And he would pat me on my shoulder. Yes. Uh, we were in Rome and encouraged me to study this Bible. He would tell me all these things you see would come and go, yes. but the word of God abides forever. Yes. I had a good upbringing with Brother Goodwin, and I could never turn against him, no matter what. He was the greatest man in my life, and he taught me scriptures. Yes. And why, I, why I'm saying this, because some things I know about the Bible, I don't know a lot, Nobody knows a lot. This, this is an ever-revealing book. Yes. Progressive. Yes. Progressive. When you think you know it, you don't know it. And that's why a lot of people get hung up because they believe they know it. I've read it. That's it. But when you read it, it might not be so. Or it, five years down the road, a totally different book. And I, I've learned uh, from Brother Goodwin, he would instruct me, he said, quit buying vitamins and get to the Bible. I said, Brother Goodwin, talk to me like that. And we were together in India, and he would, he would talk to me about the scripture. And I didn't know that days like today would come. But it's one thing to preach the gospel or preach the word of God, but it's another thing to have an insight. Yes. Okay, you can preach, but did you see that? Okay, you can preach a wonderful message, but did you see the scripture? You have to see the scripture. You understand what I mean? Like I'm seeing your lover, I got to see the scripture. Then I have to know which way it's going. And remember that I don't, and you don't tell the scripture what to do, how to do it. You don't tell God how to do it. He tells us what to do, yes. how to do it, yes, when to do it, Amen. where to do it. Amen. And um, his ways are always right. And if you learn to, uh, it's a hard way to give up your, your ways and to say yes to the Lord, but it's a better way. Amen. It's a better way. And to, to spend time with God. Yes. Um, my wife woke me when I was up at three o'clock this morning. She said, you know what um, title there they're gonna have, have you? And I didn't know. And uh, I look at it and I, I went back to bed or something like that. And I glanced um, in Matthew 24. That's a great prophecy. That's one of the greatest that Jesus Christ gave in Matthew 24. And I like when you turn with me to scriptures and help me to read and so on. And I look and I read it. He said, this gospel, this gospel, which one? Which one? Which one? <laughs> this gospel. Do you have it? Do I have it? I'm not just talking about shouting and running and hooping and hollering. But this gospel, the gospel that Jesus preached, the gospel that the apostle spoke about, preach. This gospel of the kingdom, what kingdom? Because remember, the kingdom was not yet established when Jesus was on the earth. John offered it, but they rejected it. Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. But they never received the kingdom of God. So what kingdom? Was there a kingdom to be at hand? Was it already established? And Jesus Christ uh, went to the cross. So the thief on the cross asked him, said, would you remember me when thou comest or you comest into your kingdom? 
And I challenge anybody today that is not yet in his kingdom. So it could be the, the thief. And Jesus said, this day when I come into my kingdom, I'm going to remember you. And I know he's going to remember me too. He's going to remember you too. When I come into my kingdom, because the kingdom is not yet established, but we have the promise of the kingdom. We have the agency that goes with the kingdom. Because you go back, Abraham was promised that God would bless all nations through Abraham. All the nation would be blessed through Abraham. And Abraham believed God. And God said, step outside and look up. He looked up what he saw, the stars. And so said your seeds be. And at that time, poor Abraham was dry as a stick. Nothing at all. But the promise of God does not depend on what we have and what we know. But it depends on Jesus Christ. It depends on the word of God. And so, the Bible went on to say, Abraham believed God. That's a big word. Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. What righteousness? The righteousness of Christ who was to come. Not Abraham's righteousness, but the righteousness of God. He believed God. And it was counted unto him. And that's the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But tell me what it is. Righteousness. That's what they believe in. Peace and joy. In the Holy Ghost. And it goes on. The promises was made to Abraham. And through thee would all the nations of the earth be blessed. At that time, the Gentiles was not yet coming in. But God promised them. What did God promise? Exodus 19, verse 6. I want a kingdom of priests. You look at it. What God is building. A kingdom of priests. And God has never changed that. He has never changed that. And when Jesus Christ came, he came, I want you to listen to me, prophet, priest, and king. Prophet, priest, and when he was unheard, he was a prophet. Even the woman by the well said, sir, thou art a prophet. And Jesus fulfilled that ministry as a prophet. But the priesthood, the scripture said, and were you to help me, if he was unhurt, he would not be a priest. Because there was another priesthood. The Aaronic priesthood was already established. So Jesus Christ could never be a priest. But far in advance, God saw Melchizedek. The priesthood of Jesus Christ. And he said, thou art sword, that he would be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of righteousness, Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham coming from the slaughter of the kings. And blessed him. The slaughter of the king. It's going to fulfill again. Why do the Eden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing, Psalms 2. The slaughter of the kings. They don't want him to reign. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. They don't want Jesus Christ to reign. But like Daniel said about the kingdom, 
Tell me, what did he say about the kingdom? His kingdom is an everlasting. What do I mean by everlasting? Oh, a thousand years. That's everlasting, right? All right, put 1,500 years. What do you mean by no? That's a long time, 2,000 years. Well, what does it mean? Everlasting. That means it will never come to an end. It's kingdom. Come on. It's an everlasting kingdom. And is dominion. <laughs> it's an everlasting dominion. So what God promised can only be fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Solomon faith. But behold, I found David. And from David, he establishes the, well, the story King Saul didn't do very good. He left the Ark of the Covenant out there. 20 years, he never visited. But when David came, David hunger and thirst. He didn't want to have a beautiful house, and there was no place to put Christ, our God. And he wanted to build a house, but Nathan says, no, you have too much blood. Your son will build it. And because of this, Solomon built a house. Wait. Solomon built a house. I want you to go with me to Acts 7. It was a house he built. He never, he never built something for God to, to dwell in forever. He built a house. A great house. But that's not the house. Because the scripture went on to say, Did you find it? Seven of Acts. Acts chapter seven, go there. Then Solomon, then the priest where Solomon built a house. Albeit, it, the most high dwell it not in temples made by hands. No temple can be built where God is at rest. This is not, this is a beautiful place, but it's not the temple of God. But God wanted something else. Solomon built him a house. How be it? The most high dwelleth not in what? Say it loud, say it loud. In temple, say it loud. I can't hear you. Made with hands. That's not where he dwelt. But the dwelling place of God over in First Peter, is it? Give it to me quick. First Peter, Brother Andrew, you think you know that? It says, what does it say right there in First Peter? But re remember now what he's building. Chapter one, chapter two, uh, verse two, first Peter chapter two, verse four. Put it up there. He also has lively stone. What does the word lively mean? But uh, but the Mike knows that. A lot of live league zone. I built what? Upon a Upon spiritual, spiritual house. house. Hallelujah. You. Yes. yes. I didn't hear you. You Amen. sit there like uh, you yes. also are lively. Yes. Come on, come on. Uh, let me change it. You are dead soon. No, lively. You are dead, dead, dead. I can't hear you. Lively. You therefore as dead stones. Oh, lively. Are not built upon a spiritual house. Are built upon a spiritual. Who, who say that? <laughs> who 
say that? You? 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 Therefore, are built upon what? A spiritual house. Lively stones. Come on, church. Amen. A, a spiritual house. And holy, holy priesthood. The kingdom of priests. Come on, yeah. To offer, to offer up a spiritual spiritual sacrifice. A what? Spiritual sacrifices. A what? Spiritual sacrifices. Uh here I bring this sacrifice of praise. Day, day, day. I cannot make it to church. I hope I come back tonight. Are you a spiritual house? Spiritual house. Are you a spiritual house? Yes. Are you built up? Yes. Built up by what? Built up by the ministry. Yes. <laughs> Holy priesthood and the apostles. Yes. And prophets. And evangelists. Evangelists. And Jesus Christ himself being, the chief being what? The, the chief, chief cornerstone. Yeah. To offer up. Offer Don't let me preach alone. Spiritual sacrifices. A spiritual sacrifice. Sacrifice. A what? Spiritual sacrifice. So don't go get something live. But acceptable. To God. To God. By Jesus Christ. Acceptable. A sacrifice that God wants. Amen. Not Amen. what you want, not how you think about it. A sacrifice, a spiritual house. Yes. Yes. Oh, somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to clap and say, Amen. 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 Don't tell me one sick preacher can outshout all of you. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. I bet you. One sick preacher cannot shout you. Well, come on, prove it. Amen. Prove it. Prove it. Come on. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. You are built up. You are built up a spiritual house. To offer up. Spiritual sacrifice. Spiritual sacrifice. Acceptable. Are you with me? Yes. Acceptable to God. I, by Jesus Christ. Amen. Acceptable to you. No. To God. <laughs> you only want to please God. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. So Abraham is dead. Amen. David is dead. But a greater than David uh, is here. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Solomon, greater than David. Yes. A greater than Solomon. Hallelujah. The same chapter, 7 of, of Acts says, that when you go back up a little more, our fathers uh, had the tabernacle yes. of witness, of witness. In, the in the wilderness. You, oh, you quit. You find it. Look at it. Let me read it loud. Let me read it. Are you about to read? Our fathers, Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. Where? In the wilderness. So when they came out of the wilderness, uh, I don't want to say a church, and yet I want to say a church. They had it. You could find God. They had the tabernacle of witness. Where? In the wilderness, that God even brought Moses up in the mountain and showed him the pattern. Amen. Was it Moses' tabernacle? Was it Moses' tabernacle? It was the tabernacle of David. And God showed before it was called the tabernacle of David, it was called the tabernacle of witness, witness or the tabernacle of the congregation. The fathers are that. Where? In the wilderness. As he had appointed. 
speaking unto Moses that he should what? Loud, no, no. That he should what? Make it according to what? The fashion that yet he saw something up in the mountain. A fashion. And God said, Moses, go back and build it. Something like that. And he did, he tried. But Israel couldn't understand. Just like now, we don't understand very much. Go forward. When the Jews or Israel rejected Christ, is coming. What did he do? He opened up the doors for the Gentiles. It's called a door of faith. Then open he a door of faith, F-A-I-T-H, to the Gentile. That's why you're here. You couldn't come. Acts 14, verse 27 says, And when they were come, and when they were come, come, and had gathered the church together, and gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. They rehearsed all that God had done, and how He had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. I know that one or two years might have come in, but I'm talking about wide open. Yes. <laughs> Amen. It swung wide open. When Israel rejected the tabernacle of David, the king of God, they closed the door, but a door was open to Ruth TV and to me and to Sister Mary. And look at us. Mike, look at me. How many times I, 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 I've come to Nairobi? The door open. The door was open. Rabba Kalila. Hallelujah. A door of faith. Amen. When the disciples wanted to close it, when Peter, why are you doing down the Gentiles' house? Eating the pork and pork loins with them and chickens and my doctor could. Uh, You know why they came? Because there was an open door. Yes. And Dr. King shut it. Yes. Are you with me, saints? Come yes. on, now. Yes. You see, I said to the doctor, I live long enough, I don't care what happened. You give me any news you want to give me. I was here 10 days, ask my wife. I didn't stir a bit. But I also knew that I was, if I had to get out of the bed and walk out, I was going to come here. <laughs> and he was going to come because Amen. he seemed to follow me everywhere I go. Amen. You, you think it's me following him? Them? <laughs> they follow me. Yes. They're good people. Amen. All right, where, where was I now? Acts 14. I do our faith. Acts. 14, Seven, 14, verse 27. 27. Was, uh, all right. 15 says, yes. Acts 15, 15 says, verse, verse 13, 8 is it. And yes. after they had held their peace, and James after answered, he declared to them, verse all the Gentiles was coming in. And after they had yell, held their peace, James answered, listen, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, and saying, men and men brethren, hearken unto me. Hearken unto me. Simeon, Simeon, or had Simeon, Simon, Peter, I declare how God, how God at the first is visit the Gentiles to take out of them, to take out of them a people for He's still his taking name. a people for <laughs> for his name. His name. Go on. And, and to, to disagree, disagree the, words the words of the, the prophets, prophets as it is written. As it is written. After this, I will return 
and will build, build again, again the tabernacle of Ooh, David. On. This is it. The tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins David. thereof, fallen down. Mm -hmm. They tore it up, and you go all the way back to um, Jeroboam. The two golden calves, one, and then the May two. The tabernacle of David. We call it David now. Our witness was torn up. God's church, God's work was torn up. They rejected God when God was king. In Yeshua. In Yeshua. Yeshua means Israel. Before there was ever a nation, God was king. And in Egypt, he was king. Amen. And when he brought them out, he was king. And in the wilderness, he was king. Yes. But now Jeshua walks fat and kick against God and rejected God. So Solomon was crying. So God, Samuel was crying. God says, don't cry. They have not rejected you but me. And I'll give them a king. And he gave them a king, Saul, in his anger. Yes. God was mad. Yes. And he gave him Saul. The best that human being could ever ask for. And he took him away in his wrath. Right. Right. But he said, behold, mm -hmm. I have found David. Yes. Man after my own a man heart. after my own heart. Man. Then he built to rebuild again. But he came upon a problem with the, the nation of Jews, Israel. When Christ came, they crucified him on the cross. He died. And it looked all as if it was over. But it wasn't. It wasn't. What he did, let me hurry up and close. Go to the 19th chapter of the 19th chapter of, so, uh, of Psalms. Psalms uh, chapter 19, start at verse 1. Hold on. Can you all read it me? The heavens declare the glory of God. And you look there, you said, Oh, it's the star, the moon, the sun. Well, no. That doesn't reveal the glory of God. Make it short. The glory of God is revealed when a little virgin girl one day have a baby. She conceived. Jesus Christ is the glory and the brightness of God. Amen. And when the glory was revealed from heaven in a manger, we it was, we saw it. We saw the glory reveal. And the firmament show it. Is on the work. Here's the, here's the mystery. When Jesus Christ came, what followed after? What came after? You had the 12 apostles. The firmament declares. The glory of God, the 12 apostles, early church, 120, and the Gentile and the nations open up. Yes. The heavens declare. Yes. In so much when Paul was on the road to Damascus, he heard a voice, where? Where? From heaven. Saying, Saul, Saul, say to me, why persecutest thou me? It's hard to kick against the brick, and out of it dropped. Out of the heavens fell down. It revealed this great yes. apostle now given to the Gentiles. Yes. You are not of this world, he said. It gave Paul, and when Paul came, now the Gentiles was open up. 
And he said, I've chosen him and will send him far ends among the Gentiles. And when he went and went to Gentile, what did he do? The, the message was, Acts 26 said he turned them from darkness, come on, to light. From the power of Satan. I'm telling you what the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showed it. And when Paul came, dropped down, he heard a voice from heaven saying, why are you persecuting me? The heavens declare. And this man stepped out of the firmament. The 120 stepped out of the firmament. You and I stepped out yes. of the firmament. Amen. We did not come from hurt. We came from the firmament. Amen. And from the heavens came Jesus Christ, the revelation of God. God revealed his son to us yes. through a virgin. Yes. And now he had to reveal to 120. Yes. And the un Paul said, Paul, I give you power to turn the Gentiles from darkness to light from the power of Satan. Come on, come on. One man. One man. Wrapped out of the firmament. So the heavens declare, not the sun, moon, stars up there, the glory of God and the firmament show it. His handiwork. You. Amen. You. You. Yes. You. 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 Are the handiworks yes. of the firmament. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. The firmament is the heavenly places. And that's where we were created. And I make a new image out of you. That firmament. And then it goes on. Uh, I want to. I want to read a scripture. Read it for me. Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, Romans. Romans ten verse eighteen. It, it's so much. That's a new lesson, right there. But. Uh, but I say, have they not heard? But read. It, but everybody read this. I say, wait, 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 wait. We, we, we're saying, oh, God is waiting till the gospel is preached around the world. He's going to have to wait a long time. He was waiting on you and I. He's not waiting on you and I. He's appointed a day. Say, church, he appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man. So go on. But I say, read loud. Read on. Foolish nation was the Gentile. I care how smart you are, you're foolish. He hunger you. But the Jews, but I say, but I say what? But I say, yeah, read that. Right, you and I was seeking really after God. Me, I was seeking after God. I was on the way to a movie when I was invited, and I didn't go. Oh, uh, uh, you don't don't play so innocent. You're not that innocent. We didn't love God, but to Israel, 
he said. And that day wasn't just uh, 24 hours. He brought them out of Egypt and he stretched out his hands as an eagle fluttered over her young. God protected them, but they were disobedient. Let me give you two more scripture. The tabernacle of David asked, said that um, the tabernacle of David, you know that? Yes. What it says? I will return, look at it. And build again. And rebuild again. The tabernacle of David. You, I want down. to listen. The kingdom. Then after this, I will return. Yes. He has not yet. And rebuild again. again the, tabernacle of David, the tabernacle of David. Which is fallen down. Which is falling down. And I will build, and I will build the, ruins thereof, the ruins thereof. And I will set it up. And I will what? Set it up. That's what you'll be doing in the millennium. Go to Amos 9, verse 11. My, my two scriptures. Amos 9, verse 11 said, what? In that day will I raise up. What? Say it loud. What day? What day? Huh? What day? The day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord cometh. It's not his day yet. Really. Kind of. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of what? That is fallen and thereof. And raise up his ruins. And will build it again in that day of old. And when he does this, Bishop. The mountains will flow down with sweet wine. I could go on in that. I could go on in that. I could preach all day in that. But let me give you my closing scriptures. All right. And this one is special. You got a bishop? They got to have to give an offering for this one. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 16. And I think we'll read from verse 1 to verse 5 or 6. Anybody up there in the board, start reading. Come on, everybody. Sit ye the Lamb to the rule of the Lamb, from Selah to wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion, for it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of her nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the forbs of Arnon. Take counsel, execute judgment, make thy shadows as the night in the midst of the noonday. Hide thy outcasts, bewray not him that wandereth. Let mine outcasts dwell with thee, Moab, and let thy covenant to them from the face of the spoiler, for the execution, executioner is at an end. The spoiler cast ceases to pressure or consume out of the land. And in the mercy Hold on. shall not, not fast, slow. This is this is special. This is special. Everybody says special. Read it and digest it slow, not fast. You know when your wife cooked that sweet bone and you don't want to, are you finished yet? Uh, I'm still chewing. <laughs> Go slow. In mercy, that's when he returned. His kingdom. And an everlasting kingdom. Let's read. In mercy shall they what? Thrones of Christ be established. And he 
shall sit where? Upon it doing what? In the tabernacle of David. You get it? You know now. It's not some honeycomb, honeycomb. I'm off to the promised land. God. You think God's going to produce some wild like that? He'll sit judging and seeking judgment and hasting to righteousness. That's the kingdom of God. Let's not stop praising. Let's not stop praising. Hallelujah. Come on, let's not stop praising God. Yes. Hallelujah. can say it's good to be home. <laughs> it's good to be home. You know when you have a home away from home? This is my away from home. <laughs> Amen? I missed everyone here. Nairobi, Kenya, House of Transformation, we love you. We love you. Bishop, 
Sister Mary, we love you. And we stand with this church and in this congregation. And it's, it's been such a blessing. It's been a journey. But we're so good. We're so glad that God is good. And that he gave us, he's given us the strength to be here. No, it wasn't easy. But though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Yet I will trust him. Hallelujah. And when we come to Nairobi, I tell you, you know, you feel God in a church. You feel God in a country. And, you know, it was a struggle to be here, but, but we're here. We made it. Hot and maimed, we will enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. The kingdom of God suffered violent, but the violent take it by force. Amen. And we do believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm just so glad to be here and uh, with my wife who traveled with me, my beautiful wife. Stand up, beautiful wife. She helps me. She, come on, stand up, let them see you. See, she's five foot. She has to stand up so everybody can see her. <laughs> I love that woman. She takes care of me, though I, I, I take her through a lot of pain and aches that I go through physically, but she's there, and, and, and I just thank God for her, and, and words cannot explain. Words cannot explain the honor to be, to travel and be under a man of God, such as Dr. Whitteburn. And I thank God for this man of God, and I thank God for Sister Rosie, his wife, who takes care, who makes sure his needs are met before her own, that he will be able to deliver the word of God that you heard today. Amen. Did you receive something today? Come on, did you receive something today? Amen. Amen. And that's what we're here for. We're here, yes, Brother Laverne, we love you. We're so glad to see you, about time. We're so glad. <laughs> Brother came to uh, uh, many moons to, ca to California and visit our church. And uh, we saw the hand of God on him even then. And now look at this young man of God. He's grown up to be a fine young man. And I know he'll be a fine young husband. Amen. And just words can I explain everyone here name so many people that are here that I'm just so glad to see again and be a part of the family of God. But we're here for the word of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And faith come by hearing yes. and hearing by the word of God. Yes. And we heard some powerful teaching today. Amen. And it's uh, a blessing to be under a ministry where the word of God is pure and right. Amen. And so I just thank God, and, and there's many areas of the scriptures that I want to be able to just share and touch on because, you know, you have to stay in the same line. As pastors say, you follow me everywhere I go. I say, yes, I do. <laughs> Walk we not in the same step? <laughs> Walk we not in the same spirit? And I follow you as you follow Christ. So where you go, I go. Amen? Where you, where you lie your head, I lie my head. Amen. Where your God, who your, where, who your God is, is my God. Where you die is where I die. Where you eat is where I eat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so let's get into the word of God. And, and uh, just so many powerful scriptures that were shared. And, you know, we love to, we love to enjoy God and enjoy the word and all that, he's, all that has spoken into us. And, you know, our pastor shared a lot of great, wonderful areas of Scripture Road that we need to know to who we are in Christ as Gentiles and what Christ has done and how the door of faith has been opened unto the Gentiles. Without this door being open, we would never have come in. And as we saw, yes, as pastor was showing us, that few even before the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, that there were uh, Rahab, there were uh, the 
different ones that came in individually. But the blessing is because it's every nation that feared God and work with righteousness shall be accepted. But then there was a day that when Christ uh, came, excuse me, have a little water, please. When Christ came, he came that we may hear the, the finished work of the cross and salvation that God has for all of us. Thank you, brother. Through Jesus Christ. And so let's go into just Acts. Let's run, uh, go to Acts chapter 8. And as we see uh, a glimpse of this, when Philip uh, went unto the eunuch, and I just want to touch a little areas of this area of this scripture in Acts chapter 8, verse 32, where uh, when you see hungry, when, when you're hungry for the word of God, God makes a way for you to hear the truth. Amen. He that hunger thirsted for righteousness, amen, shall receive of him, shall be filled. And it says the place of the scripture which read as this, as we know, the eunuch was toiling over a scripture and God touched Philip to run to his, his uh, uh, chariot or his whatever he was riding in and be able to touch and give this man the word of God, the answer that he's seeking. And it says the place of the scripture which he read, and we know that he was reading in the areas of scripture out of Isaiah chapter 53, it says he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before a shearer, so open he his mouth, open not his mouth. And we know this is re re the, the revealing of what Christ did for you and I, the suffering that he went through, that you and I may be saved, that you and I, our sins, we have a way of escape through Christ. And it says, in his humiliation, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? Come on, who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And so there was no, no one, no family, no seed that came after this. And we show that how can this be? Because Christ was uh, foretold as a promise unto Abraham years even before. But then Christ comes on the scene and he dies. And he goes through. But the son of God who humbled himself, he humbled himself in uh, Philippians, I think it's chapter 2, uh, verse 6. If you can throw that up there real quick. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. He says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He humbled himself. He he, it says, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him a form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. So this promise that was revealed to Abraham, that by, in your, uh, uh, through thy seed shall all nations uh, be blessed. And we know that it was not talking about seeds, it was seed, plural, one, Christ. And it says, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him a form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. He did not take upon the form of, an, of angels, but he took upon himself the seed of Abraham. Uh, next verse. Uh, 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 and says, and being found in the fashion as a man humbled himself. The humility of Christ. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. Even the death of the cross. And because he humbled himself and because he died for you and I, and uh, 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 we know that we look to Jesus. We look to the cross. But it said when he died, there was no seed. And we know that the scripture tells us when the seed falls into a ground, it abides alone. But when that seed begins to germinate and begin to flourish, hallelujah, it brings a harvest. It brings a harvest. And as we heard the word uh, shown to us uh, that when uh, Christ came, praise God, the Gentiles uh, rejected, uh, excuse me, uh, Israel rejected Christ. Uh, they didn't want uh, uh, his kingdom to be established. 
And so Christ uh, began to open up a way. He says, if any man believeth, uh, and any man whosoever believeth, come on upon my name, I shall be saved. I shall not perish. And the scripture tells us, uh, 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 it says, as many as believe, come on upon his name. When he came unto his own, his own received him not. But here's the promise, hallelujah, of what God, the plan of God, that was God was working, hallelujah, without you and I. He said, as many as believe him, gave he them the power to become the sons of God. Amen. And to them that believe upon his name. Do you believe today? Hallelujah. And because of that belief, because of faith, a door of faith was opened unto the Gentiles. You heard the word. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. You were accepted. You believed God. Hallelujah. As we heard the video of uh, my pastor, as he, as the wonderful greeting, I, words cannot explain. It brought us to our tears to see Bishop in a, a company of men to greet us here and to make sure we were okay, to take care of us. Amen. That is the work of the church. Hallelujah. I just wanted to point that out because that really touched my heart, the love that you have given to uh, this man of God. And I'm there just as a witness. I'm just holding on to his, <laughs> his coattail. <laughs> Praise God. But he stood there knowing what he went through. He said, I believe God. Come on. I believe God. Woo. Praise God. And let's go back to Acts chapter uh, uh, 8, uh, verse 33 now. It says, and in his humili humiliation, in his humiliation, because that was what he was reading, his humiliation, but Christ uh, said, I will go for them. And he, and he humbled himself in his humiliation. His judgment was taken away and shall declare, who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare? So we know how can a generation be declared? Um, and the one who, is, was to, who was to bring be the seed of that generation dies. And there's no offspring. You see, but God was not working under the law. He was not doing the work uh, that we think that God was, a, was, was going to do. As they thought when the question was, when shall you establish your kingdom? And they thought that it was going to come in swords. They thought that it was going to come in overthrowing. But God was doing a wonderful work. Amen. And if we go into uh, Acts, uh, what did uh, Christ do? I just want to touch a little bit. And it says, verse 35, uh, it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Preached unto him Jesus. So it's only through Jesus that all things, show, uh, that all things are possible. It's only through Jesus, amen, shall uh, a way be made out of no way. It's only through Jesus shall he take out a, a clean thing out of an unclean thing. It's only through Jesus, praise God, that you and I are accepted uh, through Christ Jesus. Praise God. And so as the scripture begins to reveal itself, uh, go to Acts chapter 19. And as Pastor was showing us uh, that scripture verse in Acts chapter 19, uh, excuse me, Psalms chapter 19, that scripture verse, in verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And if you begin to see, uh, if you heard the word that was being spoken, is that how the firmament, he's not talking about the stars. He's not talking about the moon. He wasn't talking about the sun. He says, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. And he comes from above, and you are below. And Christ had to come and bring us from under the law and, bring, and sit us up 
uh, amongst princes. He brought us out of the dust of the earth. Praise God. And he made us to be seated in heavenly places. And first you were, you were lost. Amen. But then he found you. He washed you. You were in darkness. He said, they that sat in darkness saw a great light. Come on. You were in darkness. You were in sin. But Jesus Christ in the blood of the, of the cross began to wash you and begin to make you new. And now you, that old thing, that old creature, that old man is passed away. Behold, I make all things new. And what begins to appear out of that firmament? Put the scripture back up. What begins to, please, please. What begins to appear out of the firmament? The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Amen. And we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, are you with me? Hallelujah. You're not stepping out the same you, the way you went in. God is creating a new creature. He's creating a creature that will be in the kingdom of God. He, the promise was given that was not to be changed, that he was going to make a kingdom of priests. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah, so words shall not turn to him void, but he will accomplish everything that he purposed. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness, I feel God in here. Praise God. And so when you and I, as Gentiles, because the door of faith is open, you and I will be are stepping out of the firmament, uh, declaring the glory of God, declaring the glory of God. John said, uh, and uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we, we beheld his glory. The glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And you and I, though we don't see him in the flesh, we behold his glory. And it says, we all beholding his face as in a glass. Come on. The glory of God. Ye are changed. Ye are changed. Hallelujah. He said, I'll make my uh, uh, angel spirits and my ministers a flame of fire. Ye are changed. Beholding his face as in a glass, you're changed in the same image. Hallelujah. Into the same image. So what is God making? He's, he says, Help my God, the scripture tells us my God is a consuming fire. Is a consuming fire, saints. You're not just what you think you are in this. This is a house, a tabernacle to hold the presence of God in your heart. Hallelujah. Because you are built up a spiritual house. Hallelujah. A holy priesthood. You are built up. God is making you. And he's pouring himself in you. Oh, my goodness. He's pouring himself in you. And you are becoming. The word of God is coming to pass. That was prophesied. Hallelujah. To Israel. That he will make a kingdom of priests. And now Peter picks it up. Hallelujah. He said, Simon Peter declared. Hallelujah. He declared uh, the first. that How God at first. Come on, has what? Visited the Gentiles to take out a people for his name. So this is our time of visitation. Come on, this is your time of visitation. Woo, my goodness. In the day of provocation, harden not your heart. Hear the voice, hear the word of the Lord. Come on. This is your time to get the word of God. This is your time, hallelujah, to be put immersed in the family of God. Hallelujah. This is your time. He said he did first visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And as it uh, was told in the prophets, as it is written, after this, that means we're in the fullness of the Gentile age. 
uh, this age of the Gentiles is coming to an end. But after this, he said, I will rebuild again. The tabernacle, come on, of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up as we show that God has a work. And so he's building a kingdom of priests that you and I, praise God, in what 1 Peter chapter 2, go on down. 1 Peter chapter 2, as my pastor touched the scripture, ye also, oh, I love my pastor, ye also, alive, as lively stones. You know what he was doing, trying to get your attention, because this is not a dead church. You are not dead stones. Come on. I'm hot and I'm maimed, but yet I rejoice in the Lord. Come on, and again I say rejoice. Ye are lively. Come on, Africa. Come on, Nairobi. Come on, Nairobi. Ye are lively stones. Hallelujah. God is the God of the living. He's not God of the dead. And you are lively. You are lively stones. Let me, do you feel the fire in where, you, where your bottom's touching the chair? Do you feel the fire? Come on. <laughs> You're not with me. That's a, that, that's a, I guess that's a U.S. thing. <laughs> Come on, you feel your, you, some of y'all over there in your seats and your feet is moving under you, but you're not moving. Come on. You are lively stones. You know why you are lively stones? Hallelujah. Do you know why? Because that is the tabernacle of David. It's not of dead works. The tabernacle of David. Come on. Oh, Jesus. He said to the woman by the well, you drink this water. And you drink it and you thirst again. But if you drink of me, it shall be in you a well springing up into everlasting life. Come on. And it says, this there be a day, and it's now is, and it's now is. Come on, are you, and it's now is. Put up the scripture for me, because I need help. The scripture's going to help me out, because right now everybody's kind of sitting down. But the hour's coming, and now is, when the true worshipers, come on, this is according to the tabernacle of David where David came in and he brought the tabernacle come on into the kingdom or into uh, 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 Jerusalem and he did not sit down David began to put on another ministry over his kingship and he put on the priesthood and he began to hey 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 begin to dance. Woo! Come on. I'm going to need some ice after this, but that's okay. <laughs> he began to dance. And the scripture tells us that hour is coming. He said, the well that you used to drink of, I'm not there. I'm not there. He was trying to show her he's not at that well of your father's. But the whale is in you. That means Christ. He said the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, as we heard the scripture, but it's righteousness, peace, joy, in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost. Come on, in the Holy Ghost. And he says, but now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. That means God. The Spirit of God is seeking. Where's my worshipers? Where's those who love me? Where are those who will dance? Who will praise? Come on. Who will worship? Who will cry out? Hallelujah. Praise God. Because the kingdom is going to be glorious. Hallelujah. It is an everlasting kingdom. It is a governing 
that cannot be moved. Hallelujah. Come on. And he needs to, Jesus. He needs worshipers. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, and you're not worshiping out of ignorance. No, no. There's a reason why you worship. There is a reason. Okay, this is what the tabernacle of David is doing in your hearts. There's a reason why. You're worshiping. He asked Simon Peter, or he asked the, the, the 12 disciples, who do men say that I am? He says, you are John the Baptist, Isaiah, Isaiah, one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? And Peter, the same Simon Barjona that declared, come on, that God used to open the door. Because he went to the house of Cornelius, Right? And they received the Holy Ghost, Gentiles. But the keys to the door was given at this time. And he says, who do man say that? I, who do you say that I am? He said, you are, Peter said, you are the Christ. Come on, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. Come on, he shook off the world. He shook off the dust. And he began to feel the touch of God on his heart. He said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. He says, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood, has not revealed this unto you. But my Father in heaven has revealed this unto you. And so you rejoice because it comes by revelation. Hallelujah. God has revealed it unto you. Hallelujah. That means the door is open that you can come in. You can take a step closer and a step closer. When uh, uh, they, Paul, uh, Paul said, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You take a step closer. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven has revealed this unto you. And it says, next verse. He says, and I say... Also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, not Peter, Jesus, the rock that was with him, them in the wilderness. Come on, the pattern that was given to Moses from heaven. He said, Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not, will not, cannot. Come on, prevail against it. Woo! Come on. It says, and I will give unto thee the keys. The keys. So how did Paul and Barnabas, how did Peter begin to open the door. How a ministry, come on, reveals the word of God, speaks it, and you hear it by faith, and you believe, and a revelation hits you, and you said, that's my Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the door of faith was open unto you, and by faith, come on, through grace, we enter in. And he says, I will give them the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. So when he says, I will establish that the pastor was showing us his kingdom has not been established as yet. And he has not entered into his kingdom. Because he's gathering his subjects. Come on, he's gathering you and I. He's gathering kingdom the priest. He's gathering overcomers. He's calling out Gentiles. He's bringing Jews. And he said, hallelujah, whoo! Hold your feet. He said, the kingdom of heaven, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Come on. I'm going to show you where I'm going. Whatever thou shalt bind on earth, come on, shall be bound in heaven. 
He's not building weak leads. He's not building little. Praise God. Glory to God. He's building lively. Lively. Living. Oh my God. Glory. Come on, as he is, so shall we be also. Come on, he's a consuming fire. You are a flame of fire. Oh my gosh. Jeremiah said, I was going to tell it, but I, I'm not going to tell it. I'm not going to tell it. I'm not going to tell it. But it wasn't about him. It's not about you. It's not about me. Oh, Jesus, it's about him. It's about him. He said, I'm not going to tell it. But something began to happen inside. Something began to burn. As I was musing, the fire burned. It was in me. Come on. It was in me, a flame, a fire. I couldn't hold it. But something was burning in me. Hallelujah, the life of God, the presence of God was burning in your flame of fire. You are a living, a lively stone. Hallelujah. Built up a spiritual house. Hey, man. And he says, a kingdom of priests, his word will come to pass. And he said, you are a who shall de declare this generation? <laughs> Pastor, I'm doing one of yours now. Two scriptures. Three scriptures. I, uh, Psalms chapter 22, verse 30. I'm trying to get myself together. It's the fire set up in my bones. <laughs> A seed shall serve him. A seed shall serve him. It shall be according to the Lord for a generation. Accounted. Thank you, sister. Let's go back. Let me correct that. Thank you. My wife and Sister Rosie. Make sure. Because, see, I, I'm, I'm from the ghetto. Okay, I'll be, I'll just be real, okay? I'm from the ghetto, and there's still some of that language that comes out. It's like, what'd you just, what? Like, pastor said, really properly, patron. Patron. I say pattern. Pattern. We, we know, we understand what I'm saying, right? Pattern. Patron. And I tell you, y'all got, y'all like, y'all English is better than mine, so I'm, sometimes I'll be like, hmm. <laughs> a seed, <laughs> spiritual laser, that's right, we talk the same heavenly language, amen. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. Come on. A seed shall serve him. You are the seed. Yes, Jesus is the seed that germinates and the harvest comes in. Praise God. But you are also you are the, the generation that comes. You are seed, kind after kind. Amen. He's the firstborn of many brethren. He's the firstborn of them that slept. Praise God. And it says, a seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. Next verse. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness. He declare. Come on, when you declare, do you do it with your mouth shut or open? Wide open. Come on, sister. Wide open. You declare the salvation of the Lord. And they shall declare his generation unto a people that shall be born. Come on. One generation cometh and goeth away and cometh another generation. And every generation declares. And now we're at this generation. 
We've come to the fullness. We're coming to the fullness of the Gentiles. Amen. And the word has been declared. Amen. From, as we know from this book, how long has it been declared? And now it's your turn because you have been bought in. Praise God. Not by work of righteousness that you have done, but by his mercy, he saves us. And you've been born in and grafted into, amen, the true olive. You've been born in by the spirit of God. Praise God. To be in the kingdom of God. And it says, it shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he he has done this. Come on. He has done this. Aren't you glad that you didn't do it? Come on. Aren't you glad your neighbor didn't do it? Aren't you glad your mama, your daddy didn't do it? Because they would have messed it up. You would have messed it up. But he, come on, the true and living God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, has done this. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. And go to chapter 24 of Psalms. Let's go to one through six. Praise God. Psalms. And it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that, d they that dwell. See, there are, there's, the, there's the, the ghetto in me. They that dwell therein. <laughs> Hallelujah. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Not the sea that you see outside, but the sea of humanity. Come on, the wicked are as a, a, a raging sea that cannot rest. Praise God. That he established it. Why, Psalms 2, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? He said, yet I will set my king upon my holy hill, Zion. Hallelujah. He has established it upon the seas and upon the floods. Back in Psalms 24. Who shall ascend into the holy hill of the Lord? This is where the door of grace, uh, the door of faith is open. There was one time we had no way. We had no ob oblation. We had nothing to give. Where are we going? But God has opened the door that you and I can take the same path. Amen. As uh, men and women that we see that has overcome. He said, who shall ascend? And to the holy hill of Zion, or who shall stand in the holy place? Questions. But here's the answer. He that have a clean heart. What are we doing? Why do we come to church? Why do we allow the word of God to wash us by regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost? Come on. To get our hearts clean. And though you're sitting here, you've come to Mount Zion. There's an ascension in your heart. Hallelujah. Your mind is changed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on, Jesus. That you may present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Come on. That the will of God will be done in your life. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let's go back. We just got that scripture. <laughs> Amen. And it said, he that have a clean hand and a pure heart and have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Next verse. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob. That seek him. This is the generation. Why are we here? Because we're seeking him. And we all with open face. We seek his face, beholding. We look into the scriptures as in a glass. The glory of God. We're changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. And God reveals the glory of God in his firmament. Amen. His handiwork. Amen. And you become the handiwork of God. The working of the Lord. And last scripture. in Go to Galatians chapter 3. Thank you, brother. 
Galatians uh, 3, verse 26. It says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Ye are all children of God. That means when he opened up the door, he brought down, tore down the middle wall partition. That you and I can come boldly to the throne of grace. No more Jews, Gentile, bond, nor free. Amen. But one in Christ. And it says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Next verse. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's the, the birth, the generation that's born. There's water baptism. Amen. There's baptism of the Holy Ghost in the baptism of fire. Amen. And John said, I baptize you with water into repentance, but there's one who cometh after, after me, whose shoes I'm unworthy to unlatch. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Come on, with fire. That is the kingdom. That is the under the tabernacle of David. Amen. It says, for as many of you, go back, thank you. For as many of you had been baptized into Christ Jesus, have put on Christ. You put on but you have to take off. That old man, the carnal man, has to go. But there's a new man called the hidden man of the heart. Amen? That's Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope, and it's by, as the pastor showing us, by the, by the promise that was given unto Abraham. God sees the promise. He will never change from the promise. And as even Daniel saw, he said, go away, go, and you'll stand in your lot. Daniel saw the kingdom that was to come, but he never saw the valley. And you and I were in the valley of dry bones, in the dead valley of death. We walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. But they that sat in darkness saw, in the regions of death, saw a great light. Light shined in your heart because he commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has now shined in your heart to give you the light of the knowledge, come on, of the glory of God, of the Son of God revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. And so you and I are brought in through this baptism, and we put on Christ. Next verse. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Come on. Oh, I got to get excited about this. Come on, because you have a hope. We have a hope. Come on. We have a hope. Praise God. That means we're part of the promise? Yes. It says neither Jew nor Greek. They're neither bond nor free. They're neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. Come on, next verse. And if ye be in Christ, then you and me. Come on. Ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise, Jesus Christ, who shall declare his generation. He took upon himself, not the form or fashion of angels, but he took upon himself the seed of Abraham. And you and I are brought in because a door of faith was opened to, unto the Gentiles that you and I can receive, hear the word, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and be brought into the kingdom of God, be brought into the covenant of God under the seed of Abraham through Christ. And he said, if, if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. That you and I, oh my goodness, have the same inheritance. That's why Paul went to the Gentiles to turn them from darkness into light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive the forgiveness of sins and receive the inheritance. Come on, the inheritance. This is part of the inheritance that you are a seed of Abraham and F heirs. Heirs according to the promise. You are heirs and joint heirs and heirs together. Amen. 
in Christ Jesus. God bless you, Nairobi. God bless you, House of Transformation. Hallelujah. God got something for us. Amen. We're going to have an awesome week. An awesome weekend. Oh, my goodness. Come on, because you are lively. You're not dead. If you're dead, you're in the wrong church. House of Transformation, you are lively. 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 Stones. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, give God a better praise then. Hallelujah. Our God is great and our God is mighty. He's our shield and ever watching over me. The heavens declare his glory. I'll let but tell the story how he reached down for fallen. Oh, our God is great and our God is mighty. He is our shield, watching over me. Heavens declare His glory. I'll let but tell the story how He reached down for fallen men. Our God is great and our God is mighty. He is our shield. Watching over me, heavens declare his glory. I'll let but tell the story how he reached down for fallen men. Our God is great, and our God is mighty. He's our shield, watching over me. The heavens declare his glory. I'll let but tell the story how he. Rich down for fallen men. Come on, lift your voice. Watching over me, the heavens declare his glory. I'll let but tell the story how he reached out for fallen men. Our God is great and our God is mighty. He is our shield and step. Watching over me.
Amen. Please take your seats. I really would like to thank the Lord for this day. Indeed, it is the day, not a day, it's the day that the Lord has made. And if we are aware of the truth that it is God's day, then we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so much touched by such love that I have um, experienced, felt from Dr. Wedderman and his dear wife and from Brother Andre and his wife having traveled all the way from the west coast of the United States of America. I, I don't know whether to say, I don't know really, but I know why they are here. You heard him. Uh, he said, they are here for Laverne's wedding and many people. And so, so for me, I just took advantage of that uh, to make sure that we have a conference right there. So we are truly thankful that God gave you grace to be here with us. It wasn't easy, like Brother Andre said, for you to make the trip. In case you didn't hear this, he said, um, we were together in Florida sometime in the month of March. And when he left that conference, he went back home and he wasn't feeling too well. And he didn't know until he went to the hospital and the doctors and the nurses, they were shocked to see that he was swelling and they had to admit him for 10 days. And the diagnosis was that there was a, a heart condition, an acute heart condition. And so he was more concerned about his trip to Africa and I asked the doctor whether he would make the trip, and the doctor said, no, no way. I don't see it how you possibly could travel. He said, I looked my way, another way. He, he just basically, he ignored what the doctor. And then we began to pray, and I remember we were driving somewhere, and uh, when we were in America, and Sister Retivi was talking to uh, Sister Rosie, and then after they had had their own conversation, then she said, can I talk to my brother? And then when she was talking to Brother Wedderman, he mentioned what the doctor had said to him. And Sister Mary said, well, whose report will you believe? And I think it struck a chord within him to confirm uh, the uh, faith that he has confessed over the years. And so he has decided and uh, made up his mind to use his own words. He said, I made up my mind that I would be here by fire, by force. <laughs> and, and there is grace in this house there is sufficient grace for you in this house. And so you don't have to worry, Sister Rosie, you don't have to worry about him while he is in this house. I don't know about elsewhere, but in this house, there is sufficient grace. And so, Brother Andre and your wife, don't worry about him. God's grace is sufficient. And he is a man of God, called of God, and the anointing of God is upon his life. And for that reason, we will see uh, the goodness of God. You will see the goodness of God um, in the land of the living. Praise God. So we are so touched and so 
encouraged by your being here. May God richly bless you and strengthen you. And that's what we're praying for. We're praying for strength. It's going to be with us uh, throughout the uh, entire weekend. It starts on Friday at 3 o'clock. He will be there. Saturday, 2.30, he will be there. And Sunday, 9 o'clock in the morning, he will be there. And then he will travel on Tuesday, or is it Monday or Tuesday, to go to Chingala, Zambia. And then from there, he will come back on the 24th and spend one more night in Nairobi and then head back to, uh, to, um, to California in one piece. <laughs> so, uh, there's, a, there's a scripture that I, I was reading, and it, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, there's no way I can recap what he and his son have spoken here today, but there are some few highlights that really are prominent. And one of them is, you know, the kingdom of God being preached. The scripture in Matthew chapter 24 in verse number 14, which is actually where everything was hinged, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, in all the world. That means Africa is there, India is there, Pakistan, Russia, Europe, America, South America. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and Kenya is included, and then shall the end come. So you need to ask yourself the question, why hasn't the end come? Because once we preach the gospel of the kingdom, the Bible tells us clearly that the end then will come. It means that we are preaching our own gospels. We are preaching our own gospels, not the gospel of the kingdom. And so in these last days, God will raise up men and women from all walks of life who will feel the urgency and the burden to preach nothing else but the gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. Amen. We can preach the gospel of the pro prosperity. It's all right. You can preach the gospel of uh, all these other things. And I believe personally that all those other things, they are within the gospel of the kingdom. But we should highlight the message of the kingdom of God. Praise God. And I know some of you are not tired of being in this tabernacle. You are not tired of being in this world. You really want to uh, see. I tell you, Brother Laverne, I, he doesn't want the kingdom of God to come today until... <laughs> <laughs> and so, and there are many that share the same persuasion. Uh, Jesus, please tarry. I need to graduate. I need to get a you know, a house, a need to get a car, I need to enjoy life. But if you be tired of living in this tabernacle, you will say, even so, Lord Jesus, come. But he's not going to come until the preachers do their job. The preachers need to stop preaching other things. They need to begin to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. That's what we need to do. We need to get, uh, become serious with the gospel of the kingdom. And Jesus was very specific. He didn't ask us or he did not require us to preach any other thing 
than the gospel of the kingdom. And so we were talking here today about the kingdom of God which is coming. Amen. It's not yet here. Praise God. It is yet to come. And so we heard of the tabernacle of David. And it's very important for you to understand what David stands for. David, that's why Jesus Christ is referred to as the son of David. The tabernacle of David is more significant than the tabernacle of Moses. It is not the tabernacle of Moses that will be restored or reestablished. What will be established is the tabernacle of David. It says, for I will return and rebuild the tabernacle of David. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. David was a king. Yes. And a king has to have a kingdom. Yes. And so the tabernacle of David has more to do with a kingdom. And so Jesus will sit upon the throne of his father David. The Bible says that, doesn't it? In the book of Luke chapter 1, in verse number 32. Uh, Luke chapter 1, in verse number 32, you know, it says, And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of of his father David. So the throne of his father David, the tabernacle of David. And so all of that, all of that, we can just uh, sum it up and say it is the kingdom of our God. And the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 7 in verse number 22, it says, and time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Praise God. The time will come when we will no longer suffer in this tabernacle. The time to rule, the time to reign with Christ throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity will come. The Bible says, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. And this is the kingdom of God. Praise God. Amen. 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 And the scripture that I want to leave you with is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And after I've sat down, I'm going to ask a few of our friends to uh, just greet the church. I know in the coming days, in the weekend, they will not have time to do that. The program will be so tight that if you want to give a speech, you better do it today or come back here on Wednesday. The program is going to be so tight that we won't have time uh, for every other uh, activity that may uh, be uh, uh, rightfully be done on that day. It says, but I, I will tarry at Ephesus in verse number 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 8 and 9. It says, but I will tarry at Ephesus until a Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. In other words, when God has opened a door for you, Tarry there. Don't tarry there. That means if God has opened a door for you, for you Brother Wedderburn, in Nairobi, tarry there. Don't go back to California. I'm, I'm telling you. It says, uh, for a great door, a great door, and we now know what this door is all about. It is the door of faith. We were told by Dr. Wedderman here that a door of faith, amen, Acts chapter 14, 27, it says, and when they were come, 
and had gathered the church together. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Now, that door of faith is not a small door. You know, Brother Wedderben was saying, it's a wide door. Hallelujah. So wide that it accommodates the Africans. It is so wide that it accommodates the Europeans. It is so wide that it is no longer restricted to the Jewish people. Because the uh, Jesus that says salvation belongs uh, to the Jews. But then now there was need for a door to be opened. And that door took the emergence of a man by the name Peter and a man by the name Paul for the door to be opened. It was not easy for that door to be opened because here were a people that would argue with God and say, no, I cannot kill and eat because nothing unclean has crossed my mouth. He was saying that I'm not going to sit down with the Gentiles. I'm not going to preach the gospel to the Gentiles because they are unclean. But then God began to deal with Peter and God began to deal with Paul and remove all that prejudice out of their hearts. God had to do it. And when that had happened, God, we know, now know, a door was open. A door of faith. Praise God. And we are here as a people that are of faith. We believe in God. We believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, and His finished work at the cross at Calvary. We are not standing in our own righteousness. We are not doing it by our own power, nor by our own might. But we are doing it, everything that we are doing here, it is by faith in Jesus Christ. And we are going to move forward we will see God's goodness. We will see God's grace. We will see God's deliverance. We will see God's enlargement because we have faith in God. So it's a door of faith. And this door, the scripture tells us that it made Paul to tarry at Ephesus because he saw people are getting uh, saved. He saw people getting touched by the power of God. He saw their faith growing. He saw their faith developing. And he said, there's no way I can go back uh, to uh, whatever Antioch or whatever it was. He said, I decided and I determined and purposed to tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost for a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. When God opens a door, the devil opens up many other things to distract you, many other things to stop you, many other things to slow you down. It says there are many adversaries. That door that God may open for you. That door of faith that God opens for you comes along with many, not a few, but many adversaries. These are the things that would hinder you. These are things that will block, blocks that would stand in your way as God leads you to this open door. Praise God. And then another scripture that came to my mind is found in 2 Peter chapter 1. Two verses in there. Verse number 10, verse number 11. It says in verse number 10, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Hallelujah. As we come to the end of this service, 
with a word that has gone forth. Powerful uh, exposition of uh, the scripture. We now must have this challenge. Uh, we now have this challenge before us. And the challenge is that we must give diligence to make our calling and our election sure. For there is a kingdom that is coming. There is a door that is coming. Because of that, let's give diligence. Hallelujah. Don't be bothered or be bogged down by things that have no, uh, no premium whatsoever in as far as your salvation is concerned. Uh, don't you major in minors and minor in major? Did you hear what I just said? Some of you will get it when you go home, as you go home. I want you to begin to focus on your election and your calling. Hallelujah. From now on, as we get into the weekend and as we move into the future, here's a direction for us. The direction is that we're going to focus on our calling. We're going to focus on our election. It's not just about making money. I'm going to focus on my election. I'm going to focus on my calling. In the house of God, you've got a role to play. You've got a, 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 a work to do. There is a calling that God has bestowed upon your life. Hallelujah. Don't say I'm young. Don't say I'm old. Don't say I'm not educated. Don't say that I don't have money. Every one of you, I don't care at what station in life you're at, you need now to recapture at this calling that God has given to you. Focus on that. Work that calling. And your election. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus Christ is coming, the king of that kingdom. The son of the living God is coming. And let's get ready. And how do we get ready? We give diligence. We study diligently. We pray diligently. We come to the house of God diligently. We are not bothered by the things of this world. The world will come to pass. But there's something that is eternal. That is why Brother Wedderburn was saying, this kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. That means it will outshine, outlive any other thing that has been and will ever be. The kingdom of God is an eternal kingdom. And I'm not going to give up the kingdom of God which is eternal for something that is temporal. How stupid do we become? And how short-sighted do we become that things that are temporary will derail the hope of something that is eternal. Everything that you see here will come to pass. And I thank you all, ladies in this house, you're looking beautiful. You're looking so beautiful. And I can tell that you must have taken some time before the mirror. Amen. But all of that, no matter how much makeup you try to put in there, all of that will come to pass. So spend some time before another mirror. And that's the mirror of the Word of God. It's eternal. It is forever and ever. Can I teach you our visitors one word in Swahili? Milele. Na milele. Say it with me. Milele. Na milele. That means forever and ever.
ever and ever and ever. It's a land where we shall never grow old. It's a land where we will never die. It's a land where you will never have to bear pain in your body. Tears will be washed away. Tears will be wiped away. Hallelujah. Somebody sang a song and said, Never grow old. Never grow old. Tis a land where we'll never grow old. That's where we are going. Eternity. Now verse number 11. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered abundantly, ministered unto you abundantly. For the kingdom of God to be ministered unto you abundantly, you cannot just take a seminate. It will take more than a seminate. It will take more than a 20-minute sermon. We are ministering a kingdom, everlasting kingdom. Not small, small, all, but we are ministering a kingdom abundantly. It has to be line upon line, precept upon precept. Little here, little there. A little here, there a little, here a little. We are ministering an everlasting kingdom abundantly. That's what you find at the house of transformation. If you want to be in a place where your ears are just itching ears are scratched, go find it somewhere. But here we have a prerogative. We have a duty. We have a spiritual duty and responsibility to minister abundantly an everlasting kingdom. It's going to take some time to study. It's going to take some time to pray. It's going to take your time to write down the notes and write down the scriptures. And so that like the saints of God in Berea, you will go back home and begin to prove whether those things that Brother Wedderburn, whether those things that Brother Andre were talking about were true. Because it's administration. An abundant ministration of the kingdom of God being ministered to you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, men. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what God is doing. He's doing a detailed work. He's doing a technical work upon your life so that you will rule and reign. I wonder how long it takes for the British monarch to prepare a king. I wonder how much detail, how much time they take to prepare the next king. How much time? Is it something that is just done haphazardly? It takes years. It takes tutors and governors. This is how you do it. This is how you walk. This is how you dress. And when we tell you this is how you walk, this is how you pray. This is how you relate to, with people. This is how you dress. You get upset with us. You could never become a king, a queen, a princess, or a prince of England. You have to be a very disciplined person. You cannot walk with the certain 
elements. You cannot just talk every way. You cannot just walk into every nightclub in the city. Yeah? So when we try to prepare, how many of you know that we're going to rule and reign with Christ? How many of you, have you ever seen a sin, a word, kings and priests in the Bible? Where in the Bible? Which book? Have you ever seen anything like that? Are you, are you really begin, beginning to take the mentality, the mind, the mindset of a prince, the mindset of a king who will rule and reign and sit with Christ? So it's just more than just coming to church and then just do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and go home. You need to be prepared. You need to be taught and to be untaught. Praise God. And so we thank God for this place. You have to have a big heart and a great measure of grace to stay in such a place. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I want to thank you, church, for uh, sitting through. We have tried to combine our services because after this, we, that's it for the day. That is for, that's it for the day. We will none, one of our departments to prepare and do the final, uh, uh, the final um, touches in preparation and in readiness for the uh, great events that we are going to have here. Amen. 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 We have people that have come here, and I can tell you, they can't wait for the coming weekend. Amen. And it's, it's, it's actually putting pressure on us. It's dawning on us that, hey, this event is here. Let's get ready in every way. The Bible says of the children of Israel under Joshua, after Moses' death, the scripture says, I think it's in the book of uh, Joshua, uh, he spoke and he said, uh, chapter 3, he says, uh, Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. House of Transformation Nation, we thank you so much for having tuned in to our Sunday service today. We pray and hope that the Word of God which you've heard today is going to minister to you and your family and is going to change your lives for the better. Now, should you be in need of prayer, counseling, or any information that pertains to House of Transformation Ministries, please reach us today on 0111-185-185. Our call center team is ready to serve you. Once again, church, thank you so much for having tuned in. And until next time, the Lord bless and keep you.